This video covers the work energy theorem. We know that the equation for work is the force times the displacement. All right, and we also know that Newton's second law for the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. And from our motion equation unit, we know that the acceleration is equal to the final velocity minus the initial velocity over time. And that delta x is equal to this quantity here, which we also found from our motion equation unit. Now these steps that I'm taking here may seem strange, but I'm developing a new equation here, so stick with me. Once we multiply this out, we end up with this equation here, which may not seem like much, but this quantity, 1 half mv squared, is equal to kinetic energy. So in the end, we realize that the total work done on an object is equal to an object's change in kinetic energy. This is the work energy theorem. So before we start working with this equation, let's chat a little bit about what kinetic energy even is. Objects have all different kinds of energy. A few different kinds that you may know are thermal energy, light energy, sound energy, and maybe even potential energy. Kinetic energy is the energy associated with an object's movement. So an object's kinetic energy depends on its mass and velocity. Objects with higher mass or higher velocity would have a greater kinetic energy compared to those objects with less mass and slower or lower velocities. The kinetic energy can also be thought of as the total work needed to bring an object from rest to a given velocity. So let's do an example working with the kinetic or the work energy theorem. So a 4 kilogram mass slides 3 meters across a rough horizontal surface pulled by a rope with a tension of 20 newtons. The mass starts with a speed of 4 meters per second and ends with a speed of 6 meters per second. What is the kinetic, or the kinetic friction force? We know the following equations. The first equation is the work energy theorem. The second equation is the equation for total work done on an object. And the third equation is the change in kinetic energy. So to start this problem, let's draw a free body diagram so we can visually see all of our forces. We have a weight force acting down, a normal force acting up, and we, have all, we were also given a tension force pulling the object to the right and a kinetic friction force resisting the object's movement, so pointing to the left. So we probably know that we should use this work energy theorem. So let's approach the right side of the equation first and calculate the change in kinetic energy of the mass. We know that the mass is equal to 4 kilograms, and the initial velocity was 4 meters per second, and the final velocity was 6 meters per second. So once we plug in these values, we see that the change in kinetic energy is 40 joules. Next, next let's look at the left side of the work energy theorem. We must find the total work done on the object. Since we are analyzing the x direction, we know that there's a tension force in the positive direction and a kinetic friction force in the negative direction. We then must multiply this net force by the displacement. So we can set each of these left and right side of the equations equal to one another. We know that the tension force is 20 and the displacement is 3, and we can solve and we find that the kinetic friction force is 6.7 newtons.